Kenny Omega is one of AEW's biggest assets and is one of, if not the greatest wrestler of the modern era. Through Kenny Omega's countless five-star bouts and incredible knack for telling captivating long-term stories, he has changed the landscape of wrestling as a whole. Kenny Omega is a true pioneer for how modern wrestling is today and when he retires, it will be undeniable how much of an indelible impact he would have left on the wrestling business. Maybe this would have been a different story if Kenny Omega spent his career in WWE, but fortunately, Kenny Omega rejected a big money WWE contract not once, not twice, but three times. And this must have left Vincent Kennedy McMahon like this. If Kenny Omega had gone to WWE, then he would have certainly succeeded in that environment and would have at least held the WWE Championship at least once by now. But it's a blessing from the wrestling guards that he didn't join WWE because he has become arguably the biggest wrestling star to have never been backed by the WWE machine. Kenny Omega has always stayed himself and he has not changed for anyone else and that could be the secret to his success in the wrestling business. Kenny Omega has distinguished himself from everybody in the wrestling industry by taking storytelling to the next level. Kenny Omega pays so much attention to detail in his matches and storylines. Kenny has perfected the art of telling realistic and human stories that really cause the viewer to look deeper and peel back the layers of the story, which is now the standard in wrestling. For the longest time, wrestling fans had been accustomed to the shallow type of storytelling, especially from WWE, but Kenny Omega's nuanced and subtle approach to storytelling changed the status quo in wrestling. On top of being a true game changer, Kenny Omega is a tremendous draw and his in-ring work is second to none. He currently holds the record for the most 5-star wrestling matches for any non-Japanese wrestler. He's widely held as the best wrestler in the world when he's healthy. Kenny Omega has separated himself from everybody in the ring through his impeccable dynamism and creativity. Kenny Omega is incredibly athletic, explosive, and impactful. Very few people in wrestling history can compete with the number of mind-blowing matches that Kenny Omega has had. Kenny is a match of the year factory and a true artist in the ring. His track record speaks for itself as he has proved that he can do it all and excel in most art forms of wrestling. Whether it be your classic 60-minute technical bout or bloody hard hardcore matches or lucha libre style and much much more. Kenny Omega can do it all. Kenny Omega does have his fair share of detractors though. A lot of people say that even though Kenny Omega is an absolute god in the ring, he struggles to cut a captivating English promo and his over the top goofy antics lessen his badassery. Kenny has also received a lot of hate for his matches in DDT, which is a promotion that does not shy away from incorporating outlandish themes in their matches. The most hate that Kenny Omega has received is for his match against a 9 year old girl. Kenny Omega's most notable hate Jim Cornette called this match a disgrace to wrestling. Jim Cornette is the leader of all the Kenny Omega haters as he constantly critiques and nitpicks everything that Kenny Omega does. Jim Cornette constantly calls Kenny Omega Kenny Olivia and Twinkle Toes McFinger Bang. This must be Jim Cornette's reaction every single time he watches a Kenny Omega match. Oh, what the fucking and now, oh, Omega. Oh, Omega wants to end it. That's what Omega wants to do. And now. And now. Despite Kenny's plethora of haters, he has more than proved himself in the wrestling business and he will go down as one of the greatest wrestlers to ever lace up a pair of boots. Kenny is just plain brilliant. Just like my new second channel, where you can find the video that was removed by AEW due to copyright, MJF, the monster that CM Punk created. Link is in the description and make sure to subscribe to that channel. But anyway, Kenny Omega was born in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, and he had a love for wrestling from a very early age. Kenny was involved in various sports while growing up and he began training for wrestling at 15 years old. Not before long, he began wrestling on the Canadian independent circuit. After a few years, he eventually got the attention of WWE and was invited for a week-long tryout, where he impressed the right people and was offered a developmental WWE contract, of which Kenny accepted. In WWE's developmental territory, Deep South Wrestling, Kenny Omega was subjected to the infamous harsh and inhumane trainings of Bill DeMott. This was a red flag for Kenny, as well as the WWE style of doing things by stripping away everything that made a wrestler unique and making them just like everyone else. Because of this, he didn't see a future in WWE, so he requested his release in 2006, of which WWE obliged. After Kenny was released from WWE, he was lost for a while, trying his hand at MMA and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Eventually, he chose to come back to wrestling, and because he was very influenced by games and anime growing up, he decided to showcase that in his new otaku-inspired character. Despite this character change and new moveset, Kenny Omega was still lost. He was lost, that is, until he saw a video of Kota Ibushi wrestling in the Japanese promotion DDT. Kenny Omega saw wrestling in a light where it could be simultaneously athletic, entertaining, and comedic, and he had a burning feeling that Kota saw wrestling in the same way.
same way. So he challenged Kota Ibushi to a match and just like that Kenny Omega was on his way to Japan to face Kota Ibushi. I go more into detail about the story of Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi in the video I did on the Golden Lovers. So go and check that out if you haven't because if I tried to explain the turbulent and nuanced story in its entirety in this video then it would probably be about two hours long. But anyway, Kenny and Kota's first match was critically acclaimed in Japan with Kota picking up the win. Soon after they formed a tag team called the Golden Lovers and a romance started to bloom between the two, which even got to a point where Kenny and Kota kissed during their matches. What is so intriguing about the story of the Golden Lovers is that to this day, no one is able to tell if their relationship is platonic or if they are actually gay. Kota Ibushi eventually started outpacing Kenny Omega, which caused Kenny Omega to get jealous and this all led to their second match in DDT, which was an astounding match with Kota Ibushi picking up the win. This match was monumental because Kota kicked out of Kenny Omega's One Winged Angel. Kenny Omega's finisher, the One Winged Angel, is the most protected finishing move in wrestling and Kota Ibushi is the only man in wrestling history to have ever kicked out of it. That's how powerful the bond between these two men are. Their story continued into New Japan Pro Wrestling and they began to drift apart even further. In an effort to catch up to Kota Ibushi, Kenny Omega joined the villainous Bullet Club and became the cleaner and this led to him betraying Kota Ibushi. The cleaner Kenny Omega is one of Kenny Omega's greatest character iterations. Done with black shades, black coat, toothpick and mouth and the occasional broom in hand, Kenny Omega wowed Japanese audiences with his heelish antics and exquisite wrestling. During his run as the cleaner in New Japan Pro Wrestling, Kenny Omega made his name. The years between 2016 to 2018 were the peak of Kenny Omega's career as the cleaner. During these years, the cleaner Kenny Omega won the IWGP Intercontinental Championship, the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship, and he was the first non-Japanese winner of the G1 Climax, which is a massive achievement. During this period in time, Kenny Omega was putting on 5 star matches left, right and center. Because of this, he earned the moniker as the best bout machine. Kenny Omega was basically putting on banger after banger after banger after banger after the bang off the bang off the bang Kenny Omega constantly tore the house down and shook the wrestling world with his matches, but none other more than his matches with the rainmaker Kazuchika Okada. During this period, Kazuchika Okada was the final boss of New Japan Pro Wrestling in many ways, and he held the top belt of New Japan Pro Wrestling, the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Okada and Kenny's four matches will go down in wrestling history as every match that they had broke the 5 star rating scale. But the best match out of their four match series was their match at Dominion 2018. This match is widely held as the greatest wrestling match of all time and it was awarded 7 star by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which means that it is the highest rated match of all time. This was a 2 out of 3 falls match that was mind blowing and went on for an hour long with Kenny Omega picking up the win and dethroning the longest reigning IWGP heavyweight champion Okada to become the top champ of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Kenny Omega was uplifting New Japan Pro Wrestling to new heights and was shifting the paradigms of wrestling through his story and matches with Okada, his nail biting and wholesome story with Kota Ibushi, which at the time he had reunited with, and his feud and match with Chris Jericho that caused billionaire Tony Khan to see that there was a huge demand for non-WWE wrestling in the West and the staggering success of the YouTube show being the Elite with the Elite which was a splinter group of the Bullet Club with Matt and Nick Jackson. This was all a perfect storm and it led to the biggest independent wrestling show of all time, All In, organized by Matt and Nick Jackson and Cody Rhodes, which sold over 10,000 tickets. Kenny Omega competed at All In and defeated Pentagon Jr. After this match, a masked Chris Jericho attacked him. The massive success of All In led to billionaire Tony Khan approaching the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega and Cody Rhodes to create a new wrestling promotion that would rival WWE. Just like that, Kenny Omega had a decision to make. Stay in New Japan Pro Wrestling and continue to be with his golden lover Kota Ibushi and be the top dog of New Japan Pro Wrestling as the IWGP Heavyweight Champion or take a chance and form a new wrestling promotion that could potentially change the wrestling industry forever. Kenny Omega chose the latter and dropped the IWGP Heavyweight Championship to the ace Hiroshi Tanahashi at Wrestle Kingdom 13 to form All Elite Wrestling AEW. At AEW's first ever pay per view Double or Nothing 2019, Kenny Omega was arguably the hottest wrestler in wrestling at that point and he faced off against Chris Jericho with the winner earning a spot to be in the match to crown the inaugural AEW World Champion against Hangman Adam Page. Although AEW was already huge in the USA at this point, this was the first impression that a lot of the western audience had of Kenny Omega. The first impression that Kenny chose to portray was by wearing gear that was inspired by the character Kirito from the anime Sword Art Online. If you know, you know. Never change Kenny. This was also where Kenny debuted his new entrance song Battle Cry. At first I thought, eh, it's okay. Then by the 7th listen, I was like, hmm, it's kinda catchy. Then by the 96th listen, I was fully shouting. 
at the top of my lungs, just like many other people. Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho wrestled a great match, but unfortunately, Kenny Omega took the loss in this match after Chris Jericho debuted his new finishing move, the Judas Effect, which is a spinning back elbow. John Moxley then debuted after this and attacked Kenny Omega. Moxley ended that pay-per-view by throwing Kenny Omega off the stage set poker chips. This was just the beginning of the woes and troubles that Kenny Omega faced in the beginning of his career in AEW. On the debut episode of AEW Dynamite, John Moxley gave Kenny Omega a paradigm shift through a glass table. It was at this moment he knew he fucked up. Kenny Omega was then supposed to face John Moxley at AEW's All Out 2019, but John Moxley injured his elbow in New Japan's G1 Climax. So instead, Kenny Omega faced off against the bastard Park at AEW's All Out 2019. While this was an excellent match, Kenny Omega unfortunately took the loss through submission. This furthered Kenny Omega's woes in AEW. After this, Kenny Omega's feud with John Moxley continued, and their feud was one of the hottest in wrestling as the two juggernauts represented different sides on the spectrum of wrestling. John Moxley the WWE side, and Kenny Omega the New Japan Pro Wrestling side. Their match was on in AEW's Full Gear 2019 in an unsanctioned lights on match. This match was built to a level that everybody knew that it was going to be brutal and bloody. Kenny Omega and John Moxley lived up to their expectations as there were many memorable moments in this match like barbed wire spots and John Moxley suplexing Kenny Omega into barbed wire. This was all very shocking and unfamiliar for the fans because for the longest time, wrestling had not seen such brutality on a mainstream level. Kenny Omega tried to hit his golden lover's finishing move, the Phoenix Splash, in a do or die attempt to finish. John Moxley off, but unfortunately Kenny Omega missed, which caused them to lose the match. After this, Kenny Omega tweeted, I lost and doctors won't clear me for TV. The problem is that you left me alive and I'll be back. I win. This alluded that the story between Moxley and Omega was just the beginning. Remember everything that I'm saying about John Moxley for later down the road. After this match, Kenny Omega was at an all time low. The American audience who were told that Kenny Omega was the greatest wrestler since sliced bread were having second thoughts about him. This was where the Kenny Omega is overrated crowd was at their loudest and they were being heard. A lot of WWE fans were also spreading hate for Kenny at this point because it was widely expected that Kenny Omega was going to go to WWE but instead he chose to go to AEW which didn't sit right with a lot of WWE fans and pissed them off. Kenny Omega was also facing a lot of scrutiny from fans because he was in charge of the women's division and the women's division at the beginning of AEW wasn't very good for a vast amount of reasons and Kenny Omega took the flack for this. Kenny Omega was trying to change women's wrestling in the west by placing a prominence on Joshi wrestlers. This was shown through Rio becoming the inaugural AEW women's champion. Many people didn't like Riho being the women's champion because they thought she was unbelievable as a champion because she was too small and that she was only booked as champion because of a previous association association with Kenny Omega. Some people even went as far to say that Kenny and Rio were dating, which is absolute nonsense. For the first few months of Kenny Omega's run in AEW, he seemed very despondent, almost like he was missing Japan or a certain golden lover. Kenny Omega did later express that he actually intended to spend the rest of his life in Japan, but he only moved to the USA because of AEW. Kenny Omega was clearly missing Japan and it was obvious to see. He was really struggling. Because of his poor form, he formed a tag team with the similarly low confidence hangman Adam page. Hangman was really struggling because he lost the match to become the inaugural AEW world champion to Chris Jericho and he was also not on good terms with the Young Bucks. Hangman tried to leave the elite and the Young Bucks were reluctant to let him go and this caused there to be animosity between the Young Bucks and Hangman and Kenny Omega was just a bystander in all of this because he was good friends with both the Young Bucks and Hangman. Despite all of this, Hangman and Kenny Omega's tag team pressed on and the tag team started off pretty roughly but they soon proved to be better as a tag team than singles competitors as they eventually won the AEW world tag team championships in a win over SCU on Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager cruise ship. As time went on, Hangman and the Young Bucks story became deeper and deeper. The Young Bucks and Hangman were getting pettier and pettier with their insults to each other and Kenny Omega was just caught in the middle. One week, the Young Bucks and Hangman were literally fighting for Kenny Omega in the middle of the ring. Kenny clearly did not like what was going on. His closest friends in the world were fighting and all he could do was watch. Even though Kenny Omega was feeling uneasy at his friends fighting, he started to find his rhythm in AEW as we started to see glimpses of how great Kenny Omega is. Three days before AEW Revolution 2020, Kenny Omega faced off against the Bastard Park in a 30 minute Iron Man match, which was an amazing match that showcased the Kenny Omega that fans initially fell in love with. Kenny Omega had the vim and vigor that shot him to the top of New Japan Pro Wrestling in this match, and this caused him to put on a bang of a match with the Bastard Park. Kenny Omega also took the gnarliest bump of all time in this match. Revolution, a special one hour behind the scenes look at Revolution. Oh my God! 
Fair play to Pac because he was one of the few wrestlers in AEW at that time that could push Kenny Omega to the absolute limit. Kenny Omega ended up picking up the win and this match is one of the greatest singles match in AEW Dynamite history. Just three days later at AEW's Revolution 2020, Kenny Omega put on another bang of a match when he defended the tag team belts with Hangman Adam Page against the Young Bucks. It's almost like Kenny Omega channeled late 2000s Kurt Angle and became the second iteration of Perk Angle. This tag match was truly amazing as it interweaved brilliant wrestling with masterful storytelling. Kenny Omega was also involved in one of the greatest spots in AEW history when he kicked out of a BTE trigger at 1. Oh! Double V trigger. 1. No! Oh! The crowd reaction tells you how much of an amazing moment that was. This match was a perfect love letter to tag team wrestling and is widely held to be the greatest tag team match of all time. This match was rated 6 stars by Dave Malta in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which is the highest rated tag team match in history, which now meant that Kenny Omega held the highest rated singles and tag matches of all time. Kenny Omega and Hangman picked up the win and after the match, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega stood across Hangman. For a second, it looked like they were about to give him a triple super kick like they had done in the past, but instead the Young Bucks just left the ring. On the flip side, for a second, it looked like Hangman was about to turn heel by giving Kenny Omega a buckshot lariat, but instead, he just let Kenny Omega through the ropes and embraced him. This was a brilliant piece of subtle storytelling and put the cherry on top of an already brilliant match. Kenny Omega was on a red hot streak and he was beginning to find his feet in AEW. He was gaining a boatload of momentum, that is, until the pandemic began. Unfortunately, the pandemic put a halt to Kenny Omega's resurgence. Right before the pandemic began, the Frazzled Elite were embroiled in a feud with the Inner Circle, and their feud was supposed to culminate in a blood and guts match, which is a war game style match in a double sided cage. But unfortunately, that match didn't happen due to the pandemic. The pandemic really slowed Kenny Omega down as he was really starting to gain respect of the AEW fanbase, but then he was forced to wrestle with no crowds, which did not do him any favors. In the early pandemic episodes, Kenny Omega got flagged from the wrestling community before his match with Alan Angels, who was an unknown enhancement talent at that time. Kenny Omega beat Alan Angels in about 6 minutes, but a lot of people on the internet, most notably wrestling journalist Ryan Satin, were upset that Kenny Omega was selling for an unknown talent and that Alan Angels kicked out of a V-trigger. Satin argued that this did not help Kenny Omega's star presence and drawing power. Kenny Omega was facing heavy criticism once again, but he pressed on and showed the fans what he's made of. In his false card anywhere, tag team street fight with Matt Hardy against Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara of the Inner Circle. Kenny Omega shined in this match as he hit a moonsault off a scissor lift. This is an incredibly dangerous move that only a few wrestlers can perform correctly without getting hurt, and Kenny Omega did it flawlessly. Kenny Omega then shined more in this match as him and Matt Hardy ran Sammy Guevara over with a golf cart. Before Kenny and Matt hit Sammy, Kenny was like, I'll get you, bitch. This moment was one of the most memorable moments in pandemic era wrestling and will go down in wrestling meme history. Unfortunately, Kenny Omega took the pin after a Judas effect in this match, but he proved himself again in the Stadium Stampede match at AEW's Double or Nothing 2020, which was a cinematic match between the Inner Circle and the Elite and Matt Hardy that took place in the TIAA Bankfield Stadium. This match was amazing and filled with many entertaining moments. Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy tried to run Sammy Guevara over once again, but Sammy just escaped. However, Sammy Guevara could couldn't manage to escape Kenny completely, as Kenny gave Sammy a one-winged angel from a ledge of the stadium onto a crash pad to pick up the win for the elite. I believe I can fly. This was an epic way to end off an epic match. After this match, Hangman and Kenny's tag team became even more cohesive as they defended the tag team titles every week. Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page looked like an unstoppable force, but then enter FTR, formerly known as the Revival in WWE. FTR had known Hangman for 12 years, which is longer than Hangman had known Kenny Omega. FTR also liked to drink like Hangman, so naturally, Hangman was drawn to FTR more than Kenny. FTR had no problems with Kenny Omega in the beginning, as they even offered him a beer in the middle of the ring, but Kenny Omega threw that beer out immediately outside the ring, which pissed FTR off. Because of this, the following week, they dumped beer all over Kenny Omega's head. Kenny Omega is straight edge, meaning he doesn't drink or smoke, and so he couldn't get along with FTR as well as Hangman, and he managed to get on their bad side. As time went on, Hangman became closer and closer with FTR, and Hangman was drifting apart from Kenny Omega. One week when Hangman was getting a beatdown from the Dark Order, FTR came out for the save before Kenny Omega. This gave Hangman the message that his true friends were FTR. 
Hangman was so desperate for friendship at this time and he found that in FTR. However, FTR did not have good intentions with Hangman. FTR managed to persuade Hangman into costing the Young Bucks a tag team title shot and this caused Hangman to get kicked out of the Elite. It turned out that FTR were only using Hangman to manipulate their way into a tag team title shot, of which they eventually got. This betrayal really hurt Hangman and it enraged him to a point that it started to affect his relationship with Kenny Omega. This intense beef all culminated at AEW's All Out 2020 with Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page defending the AEW tag team belts against FTR. This match was fantastic, but Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page were out of sync like in the old days. FTR took advantage of this and picked up the win, becoming the new AEW tag team champs in the process. After this match, Kenny Omega was visibly upset and disappointed at Hangman, so he picked up a little ringside table and for a few seconds, he thought about hitting the despondent, broken down and heartbroken Hangman. This would have solidified him as turning heel, but instead, Kenny Omega just threw the table to the side, and Hangman came over to embrace Kenny, but Kenny Omega just let the tired Hangman fall to the ground, and Kenny just walked off in disappointment, and left Hangman in the middle of the ring. Kenny Omega was the last person to have believed in Hangman, but Hangman let him down, and Kenny decided that it's time to move on. Kenny Omega then walked off backstage after the match and declared that it's time for a cleanup. Kenny Omega had clearly had enough of everything and he was tired of losing, so he decided to lean into his darker side. He decided to embark on a very slow and gradual heel turn. He decided that he has to fulfill the destiny that so many people had bestowed upon him to become the top dog of AEW. Kenny Omega decided to become the cleaner once again. So Kenny Omega began posting pictures on Instagram that teased the return of the cleaner. The eliminated tournament was then announced and the winner of this knockouts tournament would receive a shot at the AEW World Championship. In Kenny Omega's first round match against Sonny Kiss, he had a new heelish attitude as he debuted his epic new entrance sequence. This entrance was goosebump inducing. Kenny Omega was finally being presented as the massive deal that he was and he went on to beat Sonny Kiss in only 26 seconds. Right after he beat Sonny Kiss, he let out this iconic straight face. The memes that spawned from Kenny Omega's straight face were legendary. With this straight face, Kenny Omega was basically saying, Robert, Stop it! Y'all quit playing! Quit playing! Too many people had been playing with Kenny Omega's name and disrespecting him ever since he got to AEW. Kenny Omega's rampant win sent a message to the wrestling world that Kenny Omega was not playing around anymore and that he was gunning for the top spot in AEW. Kenny Omega then went on to beat Penta Alcero Miedo in the second round of the Eliminated Tournament and in the finals of the Eliminated Tournament, he faced off against his former tag team partner, Hangman Adam Page, at AEW's Full Gear 2020. The match that they had together was really good and Kenny Omega picked up the win over Hangman and earned himself a shot at the AEW World Championship. Right after Kenny Omega picked up the win, he leaned over Hangman and whispered something in his ear. At that moment, the fans didn't know what Kenny Omega whispered. It eventually got revealed later down the line, so stick around for that and remember everything I'm saying that's to do with Hangman for later down the line. The AEW World Champion at the time was John Moxley, who was on an unstoppable streak, but his next challenger was Kenny Omega, and they had a lot of history going back. That the match between John Moxley and Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship on the special Game of Thrones themed episode of AEW Dynamite called Winter is Coming was set. Prior to this match, Kenny Omega also proposed a gentleman's agreement, which meant that the two would have a clean and proper wrestling match with no shenanigans, and John Moxley accepted. Don Callis, who is a family friend of Kenny Omega, was commenting for this match. This match was really good and towards the end of the match, Don Callis interfered, causing John Moxley to attack him. In that process, Don Callis managed to pass Kenny Omega a microphone. Kenny picked it up and hit John Moxley right between the eyes with it. This meant that Kenny Omega had gone back on his gentleman's agreement and officially turned heel in the process. Kenny Omega proceeded to finish the bleeding Moxley off with a one-winged angel and was the new AEW World Champion. Kenny Omega was the first ever person to beat John Moxley in AEW. Kenny Omega lifted the belt high over his head, but his victory lab didn't last long as him and his associate Don Callis fled the ring quickly and went backstage to drive away from the crime scene. But right before they drove away, Kenny Omega's associate Don Callis told Alex Marvez that they would tell everybody about it all on Tuesday night on Impact Wrestling. The Winter is Coming 2020 screwdrop sent the wrestling world into a frenzy because it meant that AEW and Impact Wrestling had a working relationship. This effectively meant that the heavily anticipated Forbidden Door was officially open. It had been a while since two major televised wrestling companies had a working relationship in the USA, so this was absolutely massive. On the first episode of Impact that Kenny Omega was on, Don Callis revealed that he had known Kenny Omega for 27 years, since Kenny was 10 years old, and he revealed that he had always had an influence in Kenny Omega's life, and that's why Kenny had been so successful. Kenny then said that he's always had an affinity for collecting stuff, and now he was looking to collect championship belts. And just like that, 
the belt collector Kenny Omega was born. Kenny Omega was already the world champion of two different promotions in AEW and AAA, so now he wanted the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Once again, the internet was going crazy with memes of the belt collector Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega basically wanted to become like Thanos and collect belts like they were Infinity Stones. Formerly released WWE talents, the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson from Impact immediately associated themselves with Kenny Omega. They were Kenny Omega's main backup because the Young Bucks weren't really gelling well with Kenny Omega's associate Don Callis, so they kept at a distance. Kenny Omega then defended the AEW World Championship against Ray Phoenix at AEW's New Year's Smash. This was an absolutely excellent match with Kenny Omega picking up the win. This match was awarded 5 stars by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Kenny Omega continued to feud with John Moxley and one week, the Wrestling World was shaken once again when after a tag match, Kenta from New Japan Pro Wrestling attacked John Moxley. This was an absolutely monumental moment because now it meant that AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling had a working relationship. Fans had been clamoring for New Japan Pro Wrestling and AEW to work together and now that the Forbidden Door was officially open, fans were salivating at the potential matchups that could happen. After Kenta showed up on AEW Dynamite, Kenny Omega caught Kenta backstage and Kenny approached Kenta like they were friends and Kenta let out the most iconic shut the f up of all time. Put it there, welcome to the American Club, my friend. <laughs> shut the f up. However, Kenta still teamed up with Kenny Omega to defeat John Moxley and Lance Archer the following week. Kenny then realized that he had to put John Moxley away for good because he was like a damn cockroach the way that he refused to die and kept coming back, kinda like Impact Wrestling. So he proposed an exploding barbed wire deathmatch to finally settle the score of which John Moxley accepted. The exploding barbed wire deathmatch had rarely ever been seen on American soil. This match was usually a Japanese spectacle so needless to say, Kenny Omega and John Moxley's exploding barbed wire deathmatch had a lot of hype going Going into it. Just before the death match though, Jim Ross mistakenly called Kenny Omega the WWE champion. The WWE champion Kenny Omega. This was absolutely hilarious. That's good old JR for you. The exploding barbed wire deathmatch at AEW Revolution was an explosive spectacle and was a really good and bloody match, with Kenny Omega picking up the win and retaining the AEW World Championship. The only thing that soiled the match was the finish when Kenny Omega fled the ring and John Moxley was left in the middle of the ring and Eddie Kingston came out for the save and covered John Moxley, but then the big explosion was botched. Thank god that before the match, Kenny Omega had a backstage segment where he was building the ring and explosives, so he kayfabe took the blame for the botched explosion. After this match, Kenny Omega made fun of Eddie Kingston for coming out for the save for John Moxley by saying that it looked like they were 69ing each other. 69 me, done. 69 me, save me, done. Save me. Save me. At AEW Revolution, Christian Cage signed an AEW contract live on pay per view and he came face to face with Kenny Omega during the famous 69 Me Done segment. After this, Kenny Omega was experiencing even more problems with the Young Bucks. Kenny was upset that they were distancing themselves from him. The Young Bucks weren't heel, so they did not appreciate Kenny Omega's heel antics. Kenny Omega then gave them an ultimatum, join him on the path of evil or their friendship was over. The Young Bucks chose the latter and they left the ring. In a surprising turn of events, the Young Bucks actually aligned themselves with John Moxley and in a 3 on 3 match, the Young Bucks finally came to their senses by turning on John John Moxley and officially turning heel. Now that the Young Bucks were heel, the Super Elite was born and their drip was unmatched. Kenny Omega's outfits as a heel especially made the wrestling world go crazy as he was the center of roasts every week from the fans, but they were all just hating. Kenny Omega was the drip god. Look at all that drip. Kenny Omega's drip was further enhanced when he won the Impact World Championship from Rich Swan at Impact Rebellion, which meant that Kenny Omega was a world champion of three major wrestling promotions and held four belts. Seeing Kenny Omega dawn in all of his gold was truly a marvelous and glorious sight to see. This was when the god of pro wrestling was born and Kenny Omega started to proclaim it more and more. Kenny Omega had reached the top of wrestling without ever stepping foot in a main roster WWE ring. The look on Kenny Omega's face when he was holding all of his gold was pure bliss and as a viewer, you could couldn't help but feel that bliss with him. We were witnessing something truly special that would not be replicated for a long time. Kenny walked out for the first time with all four of his belts when he was defending the AEW World Championship at AEW's first full capacity show in almost 500 days at AEW's Double or Nothing 2021 against Orange Cassidy and Pac. It was truly magnificent to see Kenny Omega in all of his glory. It was like watching a god among insects, in the words of Don Callis. Kenny Omega went on to defeat Orange Cassidy and Pac in what a lot of people call the best triple threat match 
few years. Kenny Omega then went on to defend the AEW World Championship against Jungle Boy Jack Perry, which was a very impressive showing for Jungle Boy, with Kenny Omega picking up the win. Kenny then went on to defend his titles in Impact against the likes of Moose and Sammy Callahan. But after his buddy encounter with Sammy Callahan, New Japan's Switchblade Jay White came out to confront Kenny Omega, which set the wrestling world ablaze because Kenny Omega and Switchblade Jay White have a history that spans from when they were both in the Bullet Club in New Japan. But oddly enough, nothing actually formed from this encounter. Kenny Omega and Christian Cage's feud then really picked up from this point. Christian then challenged Kenny Omega for the Impact World Championship on the main event of AEW's first ever Rampage, of which Kenny Omega accepted. This was a really good match but Kenny Omega took the loss. Christian Cage became the new Impact World Champion and Kenny Omega's belt collector gimmick was over, but it was awesome while it lasted. This set up the rematch for the AEW World Championship at AEW's All Out 2021. This match was also really good and Kenny Omega got revenge on Christian Cage and picked up the win. After this match, something crazy happened when Kenny Omega was on his victory lap around the ring with the Super Elite. The lights went out and this iconic music hit. You know it's all about Adam Cole walked out to the ring and embraced his elite brethren. But then something even crazier happened. The American Dragon Brian Danielson made his shocking debut in AEW and confronted Kenny Omega. These two signings were major because they were two huge stars in WWE and they both willingly jumped ship to AEW and debuted in the same segment with Kenny Omega. After the segment, Kenny Omega was crowned the number one wrestler in the PWI Top 500 list. This upset a lot of WWE fans on the internet because they felt that the tribal chief Roman Reigns should have had the number one spot instead. Kenny Omega vs Roman Reigns had always been a hot debate debate in the wrestling community, but this just solidified Kenny Omega as being better than Roman Reigns, at least for the year of 2021. Fair play to Roman because he was doing some of the best work of his career as the tribal chief, but Kenny Omega just deserved the number one spot a little bit more. After All Out, Kenny Omega immediately began feuding with Brian Danielson. Danielson was pushing hard for a match and Kenny Omega was resistant. Brian Danielson was questioning whether Kenny Omega was still the best bout machine and whether he was actually the god of pro wrestling like he had been proclaiming. This played on Kenny Omega insecurities and he eventually caved in and accepted Brian Danielson's match. This all set up Kenny Omega and Brian Danielson's match at AEW's Grand Slam which was AEW's highest capacity show in front of 20,000 people in New York City's Arthur Ashe Stadium. This match kicked off Dynamite and was not for the AEW World Championship. This was a dream match for many fans so understandably there was a lot of pressure on these two men to deliver and boy did they knock it out of the park. The atmosphere in the Arthur Ashe Stadium was absolutely electrifying. As the bell rung and the two men were standing across from each other the crowd let out an absolutely massive roar. As the two stared each other down, Brian Danielson couldn't help but let out a huge smile. In this moment, you knew immediately that you were seeing something special. These two wrestled a phenomenal match with many memorable moments and spots. This match was rated 5 stars in the Wrestling Observer newsletter by Dave Meltzer. Unfortunately, the match ended in a 30 minute time limit draw, but that 30 minutes really felt like 5 minutes as time just flew by. This match could have gone on for 60 plus minutes and no one would mind because it was that good. Kenny Omega clearly proved to Brian Danielson that he's still the best bout machine. The best thing about this feud is that it's not over. It was only chapter 1 of their story. Throughout this whole time, Kenny Omega was feuding with Hangman Adam Page. After Kenny Omega beat Hangman Adam Page in the finals of the Eliminator tournament, Hangman was lost and had nobody in his corner. He was desperate for friendship once again, so he got really close to the Dark Order. Kenny Omega continuously hurled insults at Hangman Adam Page to put him down. And because of that, at first, Hangman Adam Page was reluctant to challenge Kenny Omega, but through the support of the Dark Order, Hangman was starting to stand up for himself. Hangman then saved the Dark Order from an attack from Kenny Omega and the Elite one week. In this segment, these two panels from the aftermath of the tag match at AEW's Revolution 2020 was recreated as Hangman froze in the position of the Buckshot Lariat. The storytelling was quite literally off the charts. Just with Hangman's gaze, you could tell that he was starting to believe in himself and this irked Kenny Omega. The following week, Kenny Omega and the Elite came out again and they were belittling Hangman, but Hangman stood up to them and challenged them to an elimination survival a series 5 on 5 match with the stipulation that if Hangman and the Dark Order win, then Hangman gets a shot at the AW World title and the Dark Order get a shot at the Young Bucks title. The Elite accepted. In this 5 vs 5 match, Kenny Omega and Hangman and Page were the final two, but due to an interference by the eliminated Nick Jackson, Kenny Omega picked up the win and this visibly crushed Hangman because he would not get his world title shot. Hangman then told the Dark Order that he needed space and this resulted in them not helping him when Kenny Omega and the Super Elite 
were beating the shit out of him. At this point, Hangman was the lowest that he'd ever been. Kenny Omega's assault of Hangman left him off TV for months, but Hangman eventually returned as the Joker in a casino ladder match and won the match, which meant that he would get a shot at the AEW World title. Kenny Omega's response to Hangman's return was to put him down like he's always done in the past. Kenny Omega rubbed it in Hangman's face that Hangman can't sleep at night because of his crippling fear of failure, and if that people knew the real Hangman, they'd know that he's a coward. Kenny Omega knew how easy it was to dampen Hangman's spirits because of his low confidence and low self-esteem, so he did it whenever he could. Hangman had always fallen for Kenny Omega's tricks, but this time round, Hangman was a different person. He didn't fall for Kenny Omega's tricks anymore. He didn't let Kenny Omega's comments phase him, and he was finally starting to get a grip on himself. And on the dynamite before full gear, Hangman and Kenny had a contract signing for their match. Hangman signed the contract first, and then Kenny Omega hopped on the mic and he said that it was sad when Hangman left the elite because they were like family and he said that he and the elite were always the ones to pick Hangman up from his sorrows. And he did those things because he saw a little bit of himself in Hangman and then he proceeds to call Hangman a disappointment. Hangman then brings up the fact that Kenny Omega has talked down on him for years, but at one point in time, he also had a tag team partner that he felt he didn't measure up to either. And this is a reference to Kota Ibushi. Hangman said that Kenny Omega has surpassed Ibushi now and has become the god of pro wrestling. And he tells Kenny that he's always told him lies to belittle him. But the biggest lie that he told Hangman was at AEW's full gear 2020 after Kenny Omega beat him in the middle of the ring. And he leaned over Hangman and said, good job Hanger. I'm proud of you. Hangman said that Kenny Omega was never ever proud of him and that he was always afraid of him. He was afraid that Hangman would surpass him if the feeding of failure lit a fire under Hangman's ass. Hangman said that Kenny was afraid to let Hangman realize his potential, just like how Kenny did when he was in Japan when he was feeding inferior to Kota Ibushi. Hangman said that Kenny Omega was afraid to let Hangman redeem himself because that could possibly mean that Hangman is better than Kenny. Hangman sees through all of Kenny Omega's tricks. Kenny Omega tries to justify himself by saying he only did it because he cares about Hangman, which is probably true to some extent, but Kenny Omega proves otherwise when he shakes Hangman's hand and belittles him one more time by saying, good job Hangman, I'm proud of you, just like he did at Full Gear 2020. And then in disguise, Don Callis proceeded to hit Hangman with a camera, which led to Hangman getting busted open, and Kenny Omega signing the contract with blood. The contract being signed in blood is apropos considering the weighty and dense history of their feud. This all set up their match at AEW's Full Gear 2021 for the AEW World Championship. This was one of the most anticipated matches in AEW history and it really lived up to the hype. Right before the start of this match, Kenny Omega walked down to the ring in his bastard heel glory and just before he entered the ring, a fan held up a sign that said, what would Kota think? And Kenny Omega stood and looked at the sign for a solid few seconds before entering the ring. This match was amazing and as it interweaved brilliant wrestling with masterful storytelling. This match was rated 5 stars by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Towards the end of the match, the Young Bucks walked out to the ring. And just as Hangman is about to give Kenny Omega a buckshot lariat, Nick Jackson with anguish in his eyes has the opportunity to grab Hangman's leg and cost him the world title. Just like how Hangman grabbed Nick's leg and cost the Young Bucks a shot at the AEW World Tag Team Championship. And Nick Jackson just stands there, seemingly frozen in time. And this gives Hangman the opportunity to give a buckshot lariat to Kenny Omega's back. And then Hangman goes to the other side of the ring to set up a second buckshot lariat. And Matt Jackson follows him to the other side of the ring and looks Hangman dead in the eye and gives him a slight nod of approval. Hangman then buckshot larrieted Kenny Omega for the 1 2 3, bringing Kenny Omega's iconic title reign to an end after 346 days. After this, Kenny Omega revealed to the Young Bucks that he hadn't watched the match back, so this meant that he was oblivious to the Young Bucks basically letting Hangman Adam Page win the title from him. He also revealed that he was going to take some time off. This is because he had to get surgery for the myriad of injuries that he had been suffering from. Kenny Omega had been wrestling for a majority of his AEW career through a lot of different injuries like a torn labrum, bone bruises near his tailbone, constant pain in his knees from wear and tear, an athletic hernia, terrible vertigo and much more. Kenny Omega is pretty banged up, but recently he's been appearing on Being the Elite. Kenny Omega has also been continually involved in AEW's video game production and was probably an integral part in the negotiations for the official working relationship with DDT. So from the sidelines, he's still a vital part of AEW. 
When Kenny Omega returns to action, he's going to be healed up, refreshed, and ready to cause a storm again. And it will be exciting to see what he does next. But that's the story so far of Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is undoubtedly one of the goats of pro wrestling. His track record speaks for itself. Kenny Omega disrupted the very way that wrestling functions through his awesome matches and emphasis on long-term storytelling. Kenny Omega has created a standard in wrestling that many tried to reach but failed to do so because they aren't Kenny Omega. And this makes him a true maverick and pioneer of modern wrestling. Kenny Omega is not only a brilliant wrestler, but he also is an amazing and kind human being that has inspired a vast amount of people all over the world, including me. Kenny Omega's influence in wrestling is unparalleled. And when Kenny Omega retires, people will look back and marvel at the astounding and phenomenal career that he's had, which is only fitting for the god of pro wrestling. Thank you for watching the video. This took a lot of work to make, so please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and follow me on my socials. But anyway, goodbye, you jobbers.